My name is Daniel Master. I'm a professor of archaeology at Wheaton College, and I'm co-director of the Tel Shimron Excavations. We're sitting on the main trade route from Arabia to the Mediterranean Sea. And so throughout antiquity, this was the major connection from east to west in this region. Tel Shimon is the largest site on that route. And for much, much of the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, it dominated that route between the Mediterranean and the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula. We started excavating at Tel Shimron because no one had ever excavated here before, and it was a huge gap in our understanding of northern Israel. We started excavating in 2017, and this is our fifth season of excavation. We thought when we came here that we would find some material on the top of the site, the highest part. We didn't expect to find preserved architecture from the Middle Bronze Age right below the surface on the Acropolis of the city. So here we are on the highest part of the city, and on this highest part of the city we have huge preserved mud brick walls that are 3,800 years old. These mud brick walls are important because they preserve passageways. They're preserved so high that they not only preserve the foundations of the walls, they preserve passageways through the walls. The only other place in Israel that has anything like this is the site of Tel Dan, which has a preserved arch. Here at Tel Shimron, we have something that is the architectural precursor to the arch. We have something called a corbelled vault. And so we have a passageway that's made of beautiful mud brick that's using this technique called corbelled vaulting. And this is a unique part of the story of the history of the arch in this region. So we were digging inside this passageway because it was filled with gravel and the gravel was very different than the mud brick that was on either side of it. So it was really easy to excavate because the difference between the gravel inside this passageway and the, the mud brick on the sides was easy to discern. However, the problem we ran into is it started to get very deep. And so we were digging through course after course after course of mud brick. And when we got to a certain point, we realized that it would be dangerous to dig lower because we were digging um, in a way that if there was a collapse or there was a problem, we could be in trouble. So what we decided to do is work with structural engineers to build this structure, which is designed to protect the people working inside. So we started by building it down a certain distance, and then when we got lower, we extended it down so that the people who were, who were digging would be able to dig uh, quite safely. So then as we were digging down, we ran into brick at the bottom here, which showed us where the floor was. And we were following the brick on either side and the brick on the floor. And we knew there was a brick wall here. And so it looked like we were hitting a dead end. Just when we thought that this passage didn't go anywhere, we started to see the top of something at the end of the passage. And so now what we're going to see is at the end of this passage, we found the top of a structure that was going this way. So just when we thought we were reaching a dead end, all of a sudden we realized that the passage made a turn. And so instead of being a dead end, it started to turn and go down. Now, we're not sure where it goes, but when we made this turn, we saw a most unusual structure. What we saw was a corbelled vault made of mud bricks. That is to say, we saw an intact false arch that was one of those early architectural parts of the history of the full arch that we see later on. And so what they did here is they built a brick wall and at a certain point they decided they wanted to make a vault. So they started to have one brick just set a little bit out from the next and the next and the next. And so we have this brick and then this one and this one and this one and each one steps out a little bit further until we have the top of the arch and then it goes down the other side. And so we're looking at this corbelled vault which is almost two meters long and completely preserved. They were interested even in decorating this arch. So when they made the steps out, these corbelled vaults out, they would put some sort of substance here, a white chalky substance, maybe with some basalt clay, and stick it up underneath the bricks, not to support them, but really just to decorate the arch as they were making this beautiful passageway. We could see that as we excavated, we excavated stairs going down into the arch. And these stairs that went down into the arch also showed us that the top of the arch was also descending, much like a staircase would be. So the arch was now springing from here and then here and then here as it was heading downwards. So we built a structure to pr protect the excavation into the arch slowly, slowly, and we excavated as far as we could 
before we hit the end of the arch. And once we hit the end of the arch, we had to stop because there were large boulders in the way that meant that we were going to have to continue our work from the other side. So when we think about the history of the arch, one of the key things that comes before the arch is a corbelled vault. Sometimes it's called a false arch. And so as we're trying to understand the development of these architectural forms, we often look to Mesopotamia. And in Mesopotamia, they did a lot of different things with brick, and they developed very extensive and detailed and complicated brick work. This is the first example that we have of a corbelled vaulted passageway here in the Southern Levant. And it's an example of someone bringing technology from Mesopotamia to this region for the first time. The arch that we have found is so delicate that we have to be very careful about its preservation. So in just a few days, we're going to fill it back in so that it's preserved. But we still wanna know where it goes. In order to know where it goes, we're gonna to have to excavate inside the arch in the inside of the city, and that's gonna take us several years to do. But we're not gonna give up until we figure out where the arch goes and what's at the other end of the tunnel. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and sign up for our digital newsletter so that you can stay up to date on everything from the world of biblical archaeology. And if you would like to see more, why not check out one of the videos on your screen right now?